united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning. Hi, I'm Wally Chapman. I'm uh, your host today in United with Christ. And for this month, we'll be continuing the series with five more pastors who have had long ministries in El Paso or in our area. And we're talking about how do you stay faithful to the Lord with all these years of ministry? How do you keep your family in the kingdom? How do you uh, not have burnout? And so I have a great friend today. Bobby Garcia is our host from Grace um, Christian Center, right? Correct. And known Bobby for a long time. A real um, long time. Yes, yes. Isn't it amazing how God has brought pastors who have a big kingdom vision to El Paso and they stay. Amen. And it's really changed our city in a great way, hasn't it? In a very fantastic way, yes, right, sir. Right, right. So, Bobby, were you, let's talk a bit about your history. Um, were you uh, raised in a Christian family? No, I wasn't. Uh, I, I was raised in, uh, I, I guess uh, you could say uh, from the, you know, the religious background, uh, you know, we, we, we complied with some of the stuff. But we weren't like totally religious, you know, like in church every Sunday or whatever. My my parents were a lot stricter at it, so to speak, with my three older brothers. But when it got down to my brother and I, you know, we did the, you know, we we did this and you know we we did our catechism and you know we got baptized and you know stuff like that. But it wasn't really uh, on put on us like my 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 older brothers were to be you know in church and all the time because my older brothers well they were you know they were even uh they were they were altar boys and stuff so but i don't know what happened there you know that when it was uh, my and my younger brothers turned uh you know growing up and stuff it just really wasn't put there except okay. for special holidays type okay. of thing okay so what got you to Christ and what got you involved in Christianity then? The devil chased me to Christ. Really? Okay. <laughs> no, uh, no, actually, uh, what I did was, uh, I got saved in prison. Oh, you're in jail. Uh, huh? Yeah. I was in prison. Uh, I had your standard live in the neighborhood, uh, be part of the gang, graduate to harder things, uh, you know, worse things, you know, a deeper level of drug addiction and stuff like that. And, and, you know, well, I had to kind of be a crook and a thief to support my habit. I wasn't going to work and support a habit. And uh, so, therefore, uh, I, uh, I wound up going to prison here in Texas. After traveling through a good part of the United States, I, I lived in, in, in California. I lived in Idaho. Uh, I passed through Phoenix a couple of times. Uh, lived in Colorado for a while in Denver. Uh, you know, and I lived in a few different areas of Texas. So, you know, after a while, I, you know, I wound up back here in El Paso and here's where I got in trouble and it finally all caught up with me and I wound up going to prison and that's, that's, and that's where I found the Lord. And, and really it wasn't out of fear because, oh, no, I'm jail. I'm in jail now. You know, I, I, now it's time to seek God. I just uh, came to the realization, you know, cause I, I met all kinds of people in there. You know, some were never getting out. You know, some were going to be there a long time before they got out. And some did get out, and some of them had, that did get out had been there a long time. And, and I just really got to thinking, I says, you know, is, 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 this, is, this, uh, is this the way I want to live my life? Mm -hmm. You know, is this is what I want to do, be, you know, live like a caged up animal the rest of my life? Or, you know, or, or do I, I want to get back out there, you know, and enjoy, uh, you know, freedom. And, uh, and so therefore, uh, I had an encounter with the Lord and, uh, and kept it ever since. That's been almost what, oh, I would say about, uh, I've had the Lord in my life about 33 years now. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you got out, you were in El Paso? And what right. kept you, where did you get involved or what got you going to keep you walking with the Lord? Well, I paroled here to El Paso and, and, uh, 
And I remember, uh, you know, I would, I would, when I was in prison, before I got released, I knew I was about to get released, but uh, I had prayers of ignorance. Mm -hmm. uh, and my prayers of ignorance were, I didn't know what I was going to do when I got out here. So I would ask God, I says, you know what, God, find me a place where I can go. And, you know, I didn't realize what I was asking, where I could just be there. I know, because all, all I remember that, that I left, and that was three years before, I said, all I remember is what I left out there. You know, uh, no profession, no job, no family, uh, you know, uh, other than my parents and my, and my brothers like that, but, you know, like marriage or any of that. <laughs> Excuse me. So I had nothing out here. So I asked the Lord that, and I was out for about a month. And then I had a friend of mine. He's with the Lord now. Uh, I was going to a, a local church here where my other brother, that he's now with the Lord as well, uh, he started taking me to church with him. He says, why don't you come to church with us? So we started going to church over here on Trowbridge. And uh, and then uh, after that, uh, that guy used to see me. His name was Ephraim. And he goes, I, I noticed like, like you don't find yourself, you know. I, I notice you're like, you don't know where to turn or who to talk to or he goes uh so back then that's when pastor danny was over here on alameda danny ibarra and he was having uh, uh he had sunday morning and sunday evening services so uh so he says can i invite you to a church tonight just just to check it out he goes i'm not trying to cause any trouble but just so you can check it out he goes there's a lot of people there like you that you know drugs the gangs prison blah 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 i said okay cool so we started going and uh mm -hmm. and uh and and that's when i found out they had a men's home and uh and i remembered my ignorant prayers to the lord you know about finding somewhere to be and uh i remember one one uh, i went about three or four sundays in the evenings and then when i one sunday evening uh pastor danny and a couple of the leaders of the church were out in the sidewalks saying bye to people and stuff, uh, you know, because it was a storefront church. And uh, and uh, he introduced himself. We talked, and he told me about the home. And I go, yeah, I go, I want to, I want to, uh, yeah, you know what, I want to go to the home. I, I want to go to the men's home. Okay. And he goes, okay. He goes, uh, you want to go get your stuff right now? I go, no, no. I go, Hold on. <laughs> and I go, uh, how about tomorrow about 4 or 5 o'clock if you guys can come pick me up? He go, I go and then and then I'll, I'll be ready. I go. I need to let my family know and all this stuff, and and so yeah, sure enough, the the next day uh, they went and picked me up and and they took me to the men's home and and then uh, and I stayed in the men's home, and uh, back then was uh, also a lot of, you know, uh, I got there. I remember. I'll never forget the conference. I I got to a conference. I'll never forget the theme. Pastor Danny was having uh, his his. One, one, he have two conferences a year, and he was having one. It was like in October, and uh, and and uh, and it, it it was it was molding the next generation. That's that's what it was called. The conference. I'll never forget. I've never forgotten. And so, therefore, they would preach a lot of vision and a, a, a lot of ministry. You know, they were really heavy into that. You mm -hmm. know, preaching. You know, victory outreach, you know, yep. ministry, 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 yep. you know. So, therefore, just through prayer and stuff, you know, I figured, you know, and, and these conferences and the impartation of vision and stuff, that I realized that's what I wanted to do. That, you know, I wanted, I, I, you know, I, I, that I didn't want to go back into the secular world and work, you know, that I, that there was a time where I did have to do that for a while because I, we, my wife and I got married, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I knew what I wanted. Ministry was just, I mean, God just right. put a calling on my life. And, well, and, and that's when I first met you. You were doing that with the in the home and with with some kids. And, uh, uh, yeah, a little, and, a little after. Yeah, we met through Guy yeah. Jones. Yeah. Uh, he's in heaven now, too. Right. Uh, yeah. right. Uh, and, we, and I can remember the first thing that we did together since I was, a, I'd played a lot of basketball. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you were having gang basketball right. tournaments on Saturday and I refereed some of those games yeah and then I remember uh, you telling me that you uh, you would let the you wouldn't tell the gangs what gym you're playing in until about an hour or so ahead of time 
so they wouldn't get fighting and other gangs wouldn't come and mess it up. Is that, exactly. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, uh, some of these some of these gangs that we brought together to play, I mean, you know, they were they were serious enemies, you know. Uh, but I remember back in those days, we had different people. There was about five or six different housing projects that we had different people from the church working those projects and working mm -hmm. with those kids. And then, so we would bring them together to play basketball, you know, and, and it was like, you know, instead of, uh, instead of you guys duking it out with guns and knives and everything else, you know, why don't you play a, why don't you play a game? And that was a couple of times we had fights, mm -hmm. you know, uh, things sure. got a little heated, things got a little, you know, but you know, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't nothing we couldn't control. And, uh, and so therefore, but yeah, we wouldn't tell them where the game was going to be till you know, till it was time, and and uh, and, and was, those, those days were a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, uh, they'll they'll probably beg to differ, but but the, the the city got wind of what we were doing, and that's when they burst the the the. Remember, they had the midnight basketball oh, yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. That yeah. that's the, uh, ours was the model for that because nobody was doing it right here in El Paso. Right, nobody was doing it. Right, and then all of a sudden that somebody saw it and said hey yeah so they yeah. started midnight basketball and uh right and, and that's when the city was really bad i mean we were oh, there's a lot of drive-bys during yeah, that time number two and most crime in america of cities over five hundred thousand. and yeah now the last 10 years we've been in the top 10 and some of the years the safest city. yeah the safest city so oh, god's yeah. all working through all these things yeah, going I through remember the church danny called me uh, he'd moved the church to uh the bowling alley there on on, on dyer, dyer. And he said, it's winter time. Usually we do baptisms in the parking lot with a big horse trough, but it's cold. Can we use your baptistry? And I said, sure. So I think it was two in the afternoon or something came up and they baptized 20 people in about five minutes. Yeah, we I mean, did it on a Saturday. I remember. Yeah, and, uh, I, was, I was the dunker. Were you? Okay. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And, and after everything was soaked everywhere and everybody left, I went and looked in the baptistry and uh, there were... You know, they had sweats on. They had all kinds of different clothes. There was lint and everything in the baptistry. So I called one of my, my Baptist friends, and he was always giving me a hard time about, oh, you baptize for the remission of sins. And I said, no, we baptize in the name of Jesus. But anyway, I called him that afternoon. I said, hey, Jack, come on up to the church. We just had a whole bunch of people out of gangs and drugs that were baptized and the water's filthy. You can see what sin looked like. <laughs> <laughs> and I got back at him. But oh, it was, that's there, good. That's but it was good. so neat because at that stage, the cities were, the churches were working together rather than against each other. Amen. You know? and, Amen. Uh, Amen. And it was just, just neat to see. That's right. So then you went into f pastoring a church, right? Uh, well, in yeah. In the process. And yeah, yeah, in the process. Yeah, I helped Pastor Danny for about 13 years. Yeah. And then... Uh, and then I did some youth pastoring. I did some children's pastoring. I did some pastor of the bathrooms and all this other stuff. I understand. And Most pastors understand that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and then I, I did some evangelistic work in Mexico. Uh, and, uh, and then eventually uh, the opportunity, I, I wound up at Harvest uh, Christian Center there with Pastor Lee. And uh, that kind of became our, our home church and stuff. And so I became a, the evangelism pastor there at, at Harvest with Pastor Lee for a while. And then, uh, and then uh, this church that I pastor now was over on Montana in a little storefront. And, uh, and I was supposed to just be filling in the pulpit on Sunday. I was an interim pastor. And, uh, and pastor, I remember Pastor Lee told me, he goes, you know, do, you know, go see what we need to do with that church. He goes, you know, we need to close it. We need to team it up with another church, find a pastor for it, you know, get, go preach there on Sundays and get a pulse of, of what do you think we're supposed to do with that church? You know, what, what maybe God will show you. Say, oh, okay, that's fine. So I started pastor, uh, inner pastor there. And, and then uh, I even started operation find a pastor and I had the <laughs> congregation. We called it that I had a little banner made operation, find a pastor and, and you know we were i had the congregation there praying for a pastor and and uh and about about i don't know during that process uh i had already had signed up during the summer i had signed uh i had signed up for a mission trip to cuba mm -hmm. and uh so so we went to cuba and while i was in cuba 
you know, God spoke to my heart about, 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 you know, quit looking for a pastor for that church. And it's like, what are you talking about? You know, and, uh, and you know, you're the pastor. So when I come, I came back, I told pastor Lee, I says, Hey, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to, I'm going to just be with you through the end of the year and I'm going to go ahead and resign. And uh, he goes, why is that? I go, because uh, I, I, I feel like, like I'm supposed to take that church. I'm supposed to be the pastor. And so then I started pastoring, and it was funny because we wound up over here on Alameda. And Dr. Uh, Barbara Reeves had, a, had, a, had that church building down there, and she was just doing clinic out of it. She wasn't doing anything else with it. And it was kind of hilarious with her because she would say, even well, before anything, before anything, she used to say, Bobby, she goes, you need to come up in a church because I don't have a church in this building. You know, she was, she owned the building and I go, no, no, Barbara, I go, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm supposed to pastor. And I'd see her at church again at harvest. And she said, Bobby, you need to come and open. I says, no, 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 no. I says, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see myself pastoring a church right now. I go, sorry. She goes, but I pray and I see your face. And I tell her, but I pray and I don't see your face. So you know, and she used to laugh. And, you know, Barbara's real bubbly. And she, oh, sweetie, you ought to pray about it. And I, no, 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 no. And anyway, so I, I tell you all that to tell you this. So I was the interim pastor uh, at, at this church now. So I, I finally figured that we needed to move. You know, if we're going to grow, we need to move. So uh, I called Barb one day and I said, Dr. Reeves, I said, hey, uh, Barb, I go, hey, is that offer still open to come over there and pastor? You know, uh, I'm pastoring this church right now. What do you think? And she, she says, of course it's open. I go, okay. I go, can you be there next Sunday? I go, as soon as we're done with service here, I want to I want to buy a bunch of church's chicken and take it over there and have the church come over there and have lunch and look at the building and give them some ownership and see what they think yeah. and sure enough boom they fell in love with it and i oh, says okay great. bart they liked it i go i want to be in there the very first sunday of january this was already december and boom and from there on that was almost what 15 16 years ago right well, let me ask you a question not on your personal life but how do you uh uh, you've m done lots of different things. How do you, if you were to talk to a pastor, how do you tell them this is, was God's leading? How did you know it was God leading to go and do some of the things you've done? And how did you know uh, when it wasn't? Well, uh, I, I think I thank God for, for the roots that were instilled at me at Victory Outreach. Uh, you know, you, you pray and you ask God. You know, I, I know the the mentality for a lot of people, and and that's fine. If that works for them, that's fine. You know, you know, you see a need and fill it. You see a need and fill it. But but you have to pray to see if you're the one that's supposed to fill that need. You know, uh, you know. I know I know in some areas people would beg to differ on what I just said, but. You know what? It, you know it, it. It was through prayer, and there was a lot of times that that God would just—I don't know. God is just—he's uh, really mysterious sometimes. He just kind of moves you into things, you know, and 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 you know you're supposed to be there. You just you know that you know that you know for one because you got you, you know you got peace about it, you know. And, and, and you, you just know you're supposed to be there. You know, the different stuff we got involved in over the years, okay, th there was a lot of stuff, say, for example, really quick, you know, okay, if, if I'm the outreach pastor, okay, or I'm, the, or, I'm in, or I'm in charge of the outreach team, you know, going to the streets and doing this, okay, what falls under that umbrella? Okay, if I'm supposed to be doing outreach, then obviously, you know, if there's things to do outreach, then go and do outreach. You know, now if there's an area where you don't belong, God will show you. And and that happened many times. There was areas sometimes where we would try to go in there. You know, he said that, you know, in the book of Acts, you know, when he told them where to go, mm -hmm. not no pun intended, you know, right. when he told them where to go and where to stay away from, you know, yeah. and, and, and it was like that. But, you know, I just, you know, I just, it was funny how it works, you know, how it's worked for my life, you know, because if I didn't belong somewhere, I knew I didn't, I just knew I didn't belong there, you know, and, 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 and but most of the time, uh, you know, I was 
where I need it to be. And there's sometimes there's people who there's a need, so they'll go fill it. And they may fill five or six different things and stretch themselves to the limit. Yeah. And then they limit anybody else doing something. Exactly. Because they keep doing it all instead of just doing the part that is your gift uh, uh, and uh, fitting in, right? Uh, uh, exactly. And, and I think at one point, uh, I, I kind of went through that a little bit. I sure did. And, 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 but then I found out, you know, within myself and with just because, you know, call Bobby, call Bobby, call Bobby, you know, and my wife would tell me, you know, you just don't know how to say no. And yeah. I go, I don't think it's that I go, I, I, I'm just, I'm just sold out that if, if yeah. I'm called, I'm called. And I'm into this, you know, uh, you know, I'm not the type that, you know, and I'm not against anybody who is, you know, don't call me on Saturdays. I'm off. You know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not into that. I'm you just, call most, me. Most people have a heart for serving aren't into that. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, you call me anytime, you know, I've been to people's houses out throughout different hours of the night, the wee morning hours, you know, hospitals, sure. this, that. You know, I don't, I, uh, you know, I, I don't turn off my cell phone at night. I know a lot of people do. Like I said, that's, that's between them and God. I okay. don't criticize them or, or nothing, but I don't turn off my cell phone at night. I really don't because if somebody calls and they need prayer, they need help, then, you know, if I can't help them, I'll, 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 I'll do my best to get them some help. Right. But, you know, I'm not going to turn them away because there's a possibility that I might be the last person they encounter. Exactly. So how, with all of that, you also had to keep focused to keep your marriage going and your kids going. How do you determine when to finally say no? Well, you, you know, you do have to determine it. And there and there's some guys that are pretty good at it. And then there's guys that, you know, like, you know, like, uh, and, and, and I'm going to use him as an example because he made it really public. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Billy Graham, you know, he, they asked him basically the same question right. and because, you know, and, and, and there, and there was some repercussions there in his family because of his absence all the right. time, but, you know, he was answering God's call, but thank God now they're all serving the Lord. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, there was times where, yeah, you know, I just had to make plans, you yep. know, I had to make plans and, uh, with my family, you know, uh, my wife, uh, we were married for, oh, I think about, for about 10 years when she finally, and I don't say this with, I don't say this like with a lot of joy and pride and joy, but it was, it was about 10 years before she finally got me to go on vacation. Yeah. And that's because we started having children and they started growing up. She goes, we never take a vacation and she had to tell me that for about three years. Yep. We never take a vacation. Yep. And, and I was like, well, what, what, do you, what do you need a vacation for? I yeah. mean, you know. Also, it happens often pastors don't take their day off. Exactly. Or, or time off. And you have to, or you'll get, we've got five minutes left. The time flies. Oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, no, wow. don't be sorry. It's great. But if you had some advice to people, young ministers or guys that are coming up in your church that are going to do in leadership, what to avoid so they don't stumble, they don't fall into sin, they don't do some things like that, what would you tell them? Oh, it's, it's, it's real simple. Uh, you know, in, in, in my point of view, you know, you, 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 you got to stay in prayer and you got to stay in the word. That's the bottom line. You, you have no communication with God, then you have no covering. Because as ministers, I believe you could have friends, you could have accountability problems. You, I, I could be going through something, Wally. You could be my accountability problem. I mean, <laughs> partner, partner. I excuse yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. And and you know what? And and if I'm not going to pray and I'm not going to read the Bible, no matter how much great advice you give me, I'm going to fail. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you, we got to have that spiritual hovering of God over our life. Yep. Not that he's micromanaging us. No, he's taking care of us. He's protecting yep. us. And you know what? And in the ministry, I don't care how chubby you are or how skinny you are or, or how handsome you are or how handsome you're not. You know, you know, there's people that per se get high on authority and they will seek you out for the wrong reasons. Yes, yes. You know? 
I've been studying David, and it says he was a man after God's heart. Amen. And even when he fell, he then got right back into that situation with the Lord, and he spent a lot of time talking to him. And I remember in one event of his life, he said, Lord, these people are being conquered, the city of Keilah, and uh, should we go and help them? David's being pursued by Saul, and you remember that. He did, and they won. And then he said, Saul's coming after me. Will they turn me over to Saul? And God said, yes. So don't stay here. Don't stay here. And I think that kind of relationship is developed by time, not by a whole lot of other things. Yeah, and, it's not and, a microwave. Yes. You know, and, and I'm glad you bring that up, Wally, because that's one of my, that's one of my prayers. And I'm not going to say I do it all the time, but that's one of my prayers that when I'm speaking with the Lord, I tell him, you know, because I, I, when I read my devotions and I see how people, especially in the Old Testament, will talk like you and I are talking right here with God. Yep. And, 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 I, and I ask the Lord that, you know, talk to me like you do to these dudes, you yep. know, and that's the way I say it, you know, yep. talk to me yep. the way you talk to these dudes. Yep. You know, these guys are like, hey, should I do this or not, Lord? No, don't. Hey, right. Lord, should I do this? Yes. Yes. You know. Right. Well, what do you think? You know, and, 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 and what I think that sometimes people don't see, uh, I mean, you don't snap your fingers at God. I just did that. But anyway, uh, that, that you could actually just have a conversation with God. Yeah. You know, there's certain prayers that, you know, you got to throw everything into it, you know, but a lot of a, a lot of my prayers uh and, and and you know where i learned this i i, I read the story of brother andrew uh -huh. and 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 most of his if you read his book uh, uh I, I read a culmination of his books and it was where i learned that where most of, and he was one of the most blessed men and mm -hmm. it was conversation conversation right. with god that's right and that's key well we're about out of time those of you who are watching, if this was a very helpful time, or if you know a pastor who maybe could be encouraged by listening to these series, this series of interviews with pastors on what to keep themselves focused with, go to YouTube and then look up lifechristian.tv and it's Wally Chapman interview series. And while they can go and look at these, or you know someone going through seminary or Bible college or someone on the mission field. These insights from pastors who have been in the service of the Lord for 30 years or more is just invaluable. And often they don't get it at seminaries. So have lifechristian.tv uh, in YouTube. Thank you for watching today. Thank you, Bobby, for hey, coming. Th thanks for having and me. God bless you guys. We pray that God will use you and everybody to serve him. God bless you. Amen.